Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch and I'm here today at the Clemmer Trail and we're going to hike the Clemmer Trail Scenic Spur number 78 and I have my hiking partners with me. This is our third hike together but the first time we've hiked uh, someplace besides Enterprise South Nature Park and uh, I was so excited to getting ready this morning that I forgot to bring my microphones so I'm just using the in-camera microphone so hopefully the audio is not too horrible and uh, this is going to be like a 4.1 mile round trip hike and we are going to be looking for wildflowers and uh, there should be waterfalls as well so let's see what we can find so the trail splits right here and we're going to take the right which is scenic spur trail number 78 to waterfalls. I think Clemmer Trail 302 to the left goes all the way to Benton Falls, which I've been to a number of times, but not this way. I got my little ducks behind me again. This trail, to get to where we're going, you have to cross over a creek twice from what I understand and it rained a bunch yesterday so we don't know how deep that creek is going to be. Casey and I are both wearing like rain boots, calf high I guess and Ian is wearing shoes that he doesn't mind getting wet so if we can keep the water below our calf high boots Casey and I will have dry feet if not we'll have way wetter feet than Ian I would think because these rain boots will hold the water in just like they'll keep it out if it spills over the top. I will sit down and dump my shoes out. Good idea. Look, it's our first one. No. <laughs> Casey said this is our first creek crossing. Oh yeah, stepping right in it. Waterproof. <laughs> okay, so we're coming to the intersection of two trails. We keep going straight. We've hiked, according to the sign, we've hiked seven tenths of a mile and this trail we're crossing is Clemmer Trail number 86 and we are proceeding on Scenic Spur Trail 78. Okay so this trail has some obstacles and some obstacles that aren't in the way. Are you gonna send the tornado? No that's been down a while oh. it looked like. Okay, so we're arriving now at the first creek crossing and it's difficult to say, uh, well, maybe we're not arriving at the first creek crossing, but I'm going to go stand in the creek anyway to okay. test out my boots. I thought we were supposed to cross right here, but I guess not because the trail keeps going and we, uh, when you get close to a mountain stream in this part of the country, that is a good chance to see rhododendron. Okay, so this rhododendron has new growth on it. Okay, I've decided to stop and get a photograph of this new growth on this rhododendron. And I'm using the, I'm using the macro lens, the 105, or yeah, 105 2.8 macro lens on the Z6. I'm shooting at f11, ISO 100, and 1 1.6 seconds. Let me turn on a timer, five second timer, and go. There we go. I'm making a few more shots of that same rhododendron bloom, uh, different compositions. And there's, there's not much wind, which is fortunate on a day that I forgot my microphone, but there's just enough to move the, the plant around a little bit. So I've increased my ISO to 400 so I can get my shutter speed down to a quarter of a second. And uh, actually a fifth of a second now. I'm getting a little bit more light. Still beautiful light coming down. And uh, I like this downward angle shot maybe a little better. I'm still kind of uh, composing the flower slightly to the right. I think, I don't know if it's a flower. Oh crap, I just bumped into a branch. So I have to wait some more before I can do my shot. But let me show you the composition. 
So now I'm looking down on it, uh, which I think is a, a better composition. Still using a five second timer. One fifth of a second F11 ISO 100. There we go. On this extremely up close photo, F11 still leaves a lot of uh, out of focus areas which are artistically pleasing. And uh, you know, I could, I could bump this thing up to a much higher f-stop uh, and have more of it in focus, which I think wouldn't be as artistically pleasing. And I think if I went all the way down to f4 or something like that, it would, wouldn't have enough of it in focus. So I, I think for this shot, f11 is right where I want to be. So there is the rhododendron shot there. And I just love the pink colors on the new growth. Really beautiful, and I think you can see the uh, in-focus areas of the new growth drifting out of focus in the background is kind of just right. So right here at this area of the trail, the map on all trails says we should be on the other side of the creek, right back there where I thought we were going to cross, but I was going by the map. But the trail is obviously on this side of the creek. There are even trail blazes uh, on these trees marking the trail. Plus, the trail is very, very obvious. And the other side is very, very steep. So there wouldn't be a trail over there. So all trails, fix your map. There's lots of different phases of rhododendron growth. It's really pretty early, and it gets less pretty a little bit later. So we are at the first creek crossing that the map showed was much, much earlier than this and we're using GPS to verify our position. But, uh, I, I don't know, Casey, over here it's, well, yeah, you're, you're doing good. I think it might even be easier down there. Yeah, well you wanna, I think it might be better down here. So we're crossing. See, Ian is definitely gonna get his feet wet because he's in sneakers. Casey and I are trying to find a way that is um, a little more shallow. And I'm gonna put this camera up because I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna put this in my bag and get my tripod out and use it to steady myself because this is pretty dodgy. And my foot started getting a little bit wet. Uh oh. All right, so Casey has definitely got her top of her boot eclipsed with water. I'm speeding up these creek crossings. I wanted to share them with you, but they take a long time, so I'm not going to show them to you at normal speed. I think this is five or six hundred percent speed. Casey has made it across. So my strategy when I cross a creek is to try to find the highest rocks as I can, even though my feet will be, uh, or my boots will be underwater, it, they won't uh, have water spilling into them. And I extend my big tripod out all the way and use it as something to help me balance. And it seems to work pretty good. I kind of discovered this technique by accident and I've been using it ever since. We are at creek crossing number two. I put my uh, vlogging camera up because I thought I didn't want to drop it in the water during creek crossing number two, but let me show you. Creek crossing number two is not really a very big deal. We're not crossing that creek, we're crossing a little tributary of it. Done! <laughs> Almost fell. We made it! Woo! Okay, so there is another creek crossing of the main creek, which we think is Rock Creek. So here we go. The second crossing wasn't nearly as deep as the first crossing, and the path to take as you looked for high rocks was much more obvious on this crossing than the previous one. So I was able to make it across in probably about half the time. I think he's gonna go the deep route like Casey did. 
Ian is so confident he's able to send texts while he's crossing. And he's done it. He's done it. Meanwhile, Casey drains her boots. Okay, so we've done two creek crossings now. Three if you count that little tiny one. And I've got the, the vlogging camera back out, so the picture should be better. I'm not sure about the audio, though, because I didn't bring my microphones. And now we're on the left side of the creek again. And to the right side of the creek, I'm not sure if you can see it, is a huge mountain. Let me get myself out of the picture so it won't focus on me. And we are once again hiking a pretty steep trail. We're probably two thirds or three quarters of the way to the end of this trail now. And uh, we're hoping to see some waterfalls soon. There's another little tributary. Okay, so I'm right here at it now. I'm not sure exactly how to get down to where I can get a picture. I have to do a little climb in here in a second, I think. Let's look and see where the youngsters are. They're up there. Okay, I'm gonna go down this and go over there. That's the spot for the photograph. It is. Ian found a snail. Big old boy. Five one for the trip. So somehow I've made it all the way down here. I've got this waterfall straight behind me. Uh, I've told Casey not to come. It's pretty difficult. So her and Ian are right over here. And I'm going to get my camera out and try to get a picture of this waterfall. Okay, I'm here at this waterfall. I don't know the name of it. And I've switched to the 24 to 70 and put a circular polarizer on. I'm shooting at F14, 1 over 1.6. ISO 100, five second timer. Pretty good, I'm, I'm gonna try some other compositions and maybe some other lenses to see what I can figure out for this thing. Okay, so we learned that this is Rock Creek and the name of this falls is Rock Creek Falls and you can see the place is very rocky. I was really happy with this photo. Uh, it uh, was kind of a tricky edit to get it to look nice, but in the end, it was worth the time. The guys I do live streams with sometimes have are trying to put together a challenge where we all make a photo with the Z6 and the 105 f 2.5 portrait lens from the 80s, uh, early 80s. And so I decided to put it on and try to get a shot of here. It's really not the right focal length for this waterfall, but it's kind of cool making a picture with this old lens. And uh, I think the, the shot that I'm gonna actually use, I, I actually held my circular polarizer in front of it because I don't have a polarizer with me that fits that lens. I think I actually have one at home. I don't know why I didn't bring it. Probably the same reason I didn't bring my microphones. So 105 millimeters is a little bit too much focal length to photograph this waterfall, but I like the way I was able to get this photo to come out uh, using that old lens, stop down to F16. And this is not the one with the circular polarizer in front. That one kind of got botched. But here's that lens kind of doing what it's supposed to do, stop down or opened up to uh, F2.5 and making portraits. But where that lens really shines is on kind of a head and shoulders portrait like this black and white I made of Casey at that same location. Uh, it can really melt the background when you're this close. And Casey likes this picture I made of her. Okay, so we're gonna leave this waterfall. I think there may be some more further up the trail, but I'm really not sure. Uh, I took a bunch of pictures of the waterfall. Not many with the lens that probably would have been best for this, the 24 to 70. I took a number of them with the 105 2.5 just because I kind of need to get some good work out of that lens for to submit to my uh, live stream buddies. But uh, anyway, we're going to move along and see what else we can find. Okay, I've made my way to the next falls. Right there, that's the top of the last falls we were shooting. And uh, it's more like a it's kind of a cascade. 
So I'm setting my tripod up right here on this rock and I'm gonna put my 24 to 70 on and see what I can get. Okay, so I'm at a pretty sketchy spot. Got my camera on this rock. I'm taking photos of that cascade. And I'm right on the edge. The water right there is rushing hard and there's a waterfall right at the edge of it and it looks like it's about five feet deep. Let me show you. While I was at this little area, which I guess technically is not a waterfall, it's really beautiful though. Uh, a lot of sun started peeking through and it really made it difficult to uh, get the shot just right. I had to do a lot of work in post uh, to get this one to look close to right, but I, I like how it came out in the end. Okay, I think I found the third waterfall over there, but I think I'm gonna have to walk across this and hop onto that rock and climb up that to get to it. Uh, I'm gonna have to put this camera in my pocket. So here we go. I'm here at the third waterfall and I can't get my glasses on. I'm here at the third waterfall. I got my camera set up here, tw uh, the 24 to 70 with a five stop uh, neutral density circular polarizer combo filter. And I've made a couple of shots. I made one uh, that has this little falls in the foreground. So this vertical shot ended up being my favorite photograph of the day, and you really can't do uh, present a vertical photograph properly on a 16 by 9 video. So I'm giving you the full top to bottom scroll here. Uh, this waterfall actually is named, and it's called Chestnut Falls. I was thinking it was taller than it is while I was there, but it's actually only 40 feet tall, uh, and it's hard to even represent that height because it's I couldn't get any closer to it than this, but I like having this little spill in the foreground. So uh, I really like the way this turned out, the beautiful spring foliage. And I decided to make a selfie. Of course, I had to expose this one uh, kind of uh, more than I would prefer to, so there would be a little bit of light on me. And I'm standing there in the creek, in Rock Creek, with my uh, uh, rubber boots. So this is fun. I made a few shots of this completely awesome waterfall. It's hard to capture the scale of it in a picture. I, I don't know how high it is, 50 feet probably, maybe 60. But uh, I can't get close enough to, to capture the scale and uh, it makes it look almost like this tiny little three footer is nearly as big, but it's not. So now I'm gonna pack up and hike back to the kids. Okay, we stopped at the last crossing, which is right behind me. And I set up my camera over here and made a couple of shots and a little bit of video of that little spill right there with the log going across. So if you're on the way out to those waterfalls, this is the first creek crossing. And so we had hiked a long way back from that falls to get back to here. And everybody kind of wanted to take a break and I thought this was beautiful. So I made a photo and I like it. So we stopped along the trail on the way home or on the way back to the car. Uh, I thought we were done and uh, it turns out we weren't and I made a few portraits of the youngsters with the 105 f2.5 looking down this trail it's kind of a kind of pretty trail right here and uh, I shot it at 2.5 and let the background just melt behind them you can see why this is known as a portrait lens because look what it can do to a background uh, it's really nice the uh, the bokeh that this old lens produces as we, oh, now we are up to, uh, just ahead of us is the sign where we run into uh, the regular Clemmer Trail. And how far is it back to the car from there, do you recall? Point seven. Point seven. Yeah. Point 0.7 miles from here, basically, to the parking lot. So thanks for watching. If you like the content, give it the old thumbs up and subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see you in the next one. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. <laughs>